Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. We're at Paradise Point and we've started a new phase of this cabin. We're starting the front porch, which I'm anxious to get up and get the, the roof on it so we can go on to other things. We've got quite a bit of lumber sawed, it's stacked and ready to go. And what I'm doing here, I'll, I'll bring you along with us and we'll get a porch built and we'll be able to sit out here and sip some sweet tea. We have our porch girder set here. It's 16 feet, and I had to splice it together there in the middle because I didn't have anything long enough in oak. This is actually ash. I had two pieces that was long enough to join together there in the center. You can see some carriage bolts poking through. Now, you see this thing is black. I have never done this before. This is the Japanese technique called Shosugiban, which is becoming quite popular. It chars the wood and protects it from uh, deterioration against weather or rot. And we have it sitting on top of some eight by eight red cedar blocks that's actually sitting on the concrete pad. And there's a, a steel plate underneath that that keeps the cedar from actually touching the uh, concrete itself to keep it from wicked moisture. Now red cedar is a wood that's used locally in our area as fence post you can set it in the ground and that red heart will last for many many years but we tried our hand at the shosugi bond and i'm pleased with the way it turned out up against the building you can see a red line right here i have the elevation set for the floor framing we have some two by eight oak post oak that we're using for floor joists and I can put the first joist up against this and it will give it a space behind it in case there's ever any moisture gets up here. It can go down uh, and escape without having a board right up tight against the seal log, which could eventually, without being able to get the moisture away from it, could eventually cause rot. But post oak is a wood that's pretty rot resistant and weather resistant. And so the whole floor framing will be post oak. We've got our first joist, ribbon, whatever you want to call it, rim joist up against the building. It's bolted on with 5 16 lag bolts that go through the little cedar pieces behind it. You can see the area there where water can get down through there. And you can see I have an, an X here and two lines. That's where the middle girder will be. There will be a girder on this end where that black X is. And there will be another one right here. Now where the girders come into this, we've countersunk the bolt so we won't have to deal with that. And I'll put a short ledger where the girders go and I'll bolt it through this oak 2 by 8 into the seal log. And I'll cut a little notch on the bottom side of the uh, girder and it will be anchored into this. And we'll have it anchored on the top of our girder. We've got everything locked down here and I've cut two or th actually three uh, two buys that I ripped down just a little bit for a ledger and I've just got them stuck on here with some three and a half inch torque screws. We're going to anchor these ledgers with some longer lag bolts. Got the first girder which is a four by eight post oak i've got it cut to length and got the notch for the uh the ledger already cut out of it and i'm getting ready to set this up here and i'll have two more to cut
I've got the three smaller girders, the four by eight oak, are all on, attached, fit, and screwed down. And I went ahead and I put this first two by eight oak joist in on top of the girder, the main girder. I'm laying everything out on a 16 inch center. And these joists will run parallel with the house and the decking will run out from the house and it will be red cedar. Okay, we've started to put in the, the two by eight oak floor joist in. We've got this bay of them already done and I'm using a joist hanger. I don't always use a joist hanger, but in this application it's necessary, I feel like, to put a joist hanger on there. I'm using the three and a half inch torque screws, having to pre-drill these holes through the oak. But I have the, the joist hangers on both ends of this set of joists. And we've got the joist cut to go on the other section. I've put a little strip here on top just to hold them up. They stay flush with the top of the girder. We had to do a little bit of planing on the ends of the joists so that we could get them down to where the joist hangers would fit. In this area, it's kind of hard to get a lot of hardware. We're in a small rural area and hardware stores don't always carry just everything that you need, but they do pretty good. And so we have the, the joist hangers that will work on the something that's an inch and a half. And these were sawed a full two inch, but they set and they've dried and shrunk some. So we just planed them down a little bit. We still have the strength of uh, of the oak, which would be as strong as the pine treated. We're using the oak, as I've probably mentioned already, because of its durability to withstand weather. This is post oak, and it should do the job. So we're gonna get busy and get the rest of this other set of floor joists in before the end of the day, hopefully. got a red cedar tuba sixes sawn. This is the bulk of them. We've already gotten some out and setting on the sawhorses. This will be the floor for the porch. This stuff is nice and red, just so pretty. I enjoy working with it. We've got the first tuba six here and I'm working from the center of the porch to the outer edge. That way I can keep everything symmetrical on that edge down there, I'll have a piece that will be about three and three quarters of an inch wide. I didn't want to start at one end with a full piece and then end up at the other edge with this little bitty piece. So I'd rather have them the same on both ends of the porch. So we're going to start in the middle and work our way both directions to the outer edge. We'll get us uh, several boards up here where we can actually get in and out of the cabin easily. But we're screwing this down with three inch torque screws. And they're the screws that's made for the new treated lumber, which will be okay to use on this red cedar. I'm just squaring one end of the board that goes up against the building. And out here, I'm just letting it run wild. And after we get them all on, I'll measure out uh, three quarters of an inch at the corners and we'll snap a line on top of that and cut them all off evenly.
pretty good day on this edge I just measured out uh, three quarters of an inch on either end and snapped the line and cut it with the skill saw as you see in the video it is really hot right now I would imagine it's well over 100 degrees and we're going to hook on to the trailer and go get more lumber.